Hey there everybody, it's your girl Barbie J here with the recap and review of Tyler Perry's comedy drama Sisters Season 7 Episode 11 Gone Girl And of course y'all know this is the mid-season finale and that Sisters will not be back until May 22nd So mark your calendars This is the mid-season finale for Season 7 and sisters will be back May 22nd. And I'm telling y'all right now, I don't know. I didn't feel like this was one of those season finales that leave you like, oh, I can't wait till it comes back. I can wait. I actually can wait because basically we've all, the people in the subscribers and the content creators, we all just about basically figured out all of this and what was going to happen in advance. So nothing was really that surprising. If I'm wrong about it, you know, y'all can put it down in the comment section. And for if you're new here to my channel or if you are returning and have not subscribed as of yet, you know, please take a moment right now and hit that subscribe button, okay? Hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell and select all. It will let you know every time I upload any new content to this channel. Then I ask that you hit that like button, which is the thumbs up button. Write a comment, join our conversation, and share because sharing is caring. Now, as we all know, last week, Gary threw Penelope on the floor and blood was everywhere and her she probably lost the baby and he probably killed her. We have no idea. That's why this episode is titled Girl Gone. Oh, Gone Girl, sorry. So Gary is having these men clean up Penelope's blood. And the guy, Dagger, tells Gary that this ain't our first rodeo because Gary's rushing him like how long it's going to take. And he tells him, you know how long this takes. You've been a messy boy this time, he said. And Gary gets offended by Dagger calling him boy, so he apologizes. And he asks Gary, what exactly did you say happened this time? And Gary said, I didn't. Now hurry up and get this office cleaned up. You know, and he said something about some ungrateful biatch or something he was saying. So I don't know what that was. But then here we have Andy waking up like she's having a bad dream. Oh, no, 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 no. And Jordan, you know, she's in Jordan's lap. And he's like, what's wrong, you know? And he's asking her, does she remember anything about her dream? And she said, all she remembers is a woman screaming and there was um, blood everywhere or something like that. So are they going to try to uh, make us believe that this um, issue with Penelope missing is a dream? I hope not, because with this is too real with Gary having to clean up blood and all of this stuff going on. Anyway, then they switch over to Andy coming into work later than expected, and Miss Marie is there waiting in her office for her with an attitude, and Andy couldn't even, you know, stand up to her. She seems to be a weak attorney, if you ask me. I don't know about the rest of y'all. Y'all put it down in the comment section. And so Miss Marie says she don't care if they didn't have an appointment or not. She's there to protect her billion dollar fortune from these bottom feet and low lifes who want to walk away with half the coins they did not earn. And I said, I hear you, Miss Marie. You put it up. Let them know. Let them know. So and she also said Andy needs to know about her is that she doesn't live her life on anyone else's schedule. Then she tore Andy a new one for calling her Miss Marie Willis. She said, for the last time, I said, you see, come on, Andy, stop being so weak and wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. So next we have Sabrina calling Karen to see how she's doing and telling her she wants to have the girls meet up for mocktails at Rich's Juice Bar. So Karen says, oh, Danny's going to like that. And Sabrina sort of rolled her eyes and I said, see, Already, Karen's in a mood to try to start something. So anyway, Karen asks, is it just for a sister circle? And she's like, yes, why? And she's like, because some people think the group is open to new members or something like that. And so Sabrina's like, okay, so what's wrong with Fatima? And Karen says, first Andy, then Danny, and now you under her spell too? What is it about this chick that has my ex in his... And my oldest friends keep bringing her all around me. I said, oh my goodness, what is wrong with her? I'm going to tell you what's up with this chick, why they bring, them around, bring her around you. Because they like her. Fatima has helped Andy out of jams. Fatima has helped Danny 
Ida Jams. Fatima has helped Sabrina out of jams and she probably would have helped you too if you wasn't so mean and stuck up and ugh about it you were cool with her when you first met her you did her hair in your salon and now all of a sudden because you found out she was dating Zach you got a problem with her you didn't have one before so I don't feel bad for you girl so while Sabrina is talking to Karen at work with her door open who comes by but Miss India Going, <clears throat> is that a personal phone call? And Sabrina didn't even know what to say. She's like, uh, 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 and I said, see? And she said, I hope that's not the example you'll be showing your staff when you're the new um man branch manager. And Sabrina was like, what? What? What did you say? She said, yeah, you got the branch manager job. But what we find out is that she got the branch manager job because Paige got fired for doing something I don't know, freaky or something with customers or something like that. So did Sabrina get it on her own merit? Maybe not. She might have only gotten it because Paige got fired. So now we have Karen calling Danny about the mocktail party. And of course, Danny answers, hey, girl, you find out who your baby daddy is yet? <laughs> and she's like, who wants to know you or your new best friend Fatima? And so Danny asks, okay, who pissed in your oatmeal this morning? And she replies, I guess I'm just tired of running with a pack of disloyal heifers. And she's like, who's disloyal? You know, and then Danny proceeded to defending herself against Karen's comments, which was ridiculous. And then Danny had to tell Karen that she and Andy are grown women and they're allowed to have friends outside of the sister circle. You know, it's ridiculous. And then Karen gets mean and says, how would you like if I started hanging out with Tony's ex-wife? And Danny was like, I don't care. Maybe they could help get them damn kids in line or something like that. She said, oh, okay. Or well, what if I started hanging out with that Preston's new wife and he, that he married despite being in love with you or something like that? And Danny got quiet and didn't say nothing. She said, oh, I don't hear you saying nothing. Danny said, some of us are not afforded the opportunity to have our own business and work for ourselves. She said, so I'm going to hang up this phone before I say something and cuss you out and lose my job. She said, because if I lose my job, I'm coming in and live with you. You know, she was like, so I'm going to get off the phone. She said, well, I'm not finished yet. And she said, this is for us and it's not for Fatima. Like it's for the sister group, but not Fatima. And she said, you know what? I'll invite whoever I want to. And if I want to invite Fatima, I will biatch. And she hung up on her. I said, oh my Lord, Karen was just terrible. So then all of a sudden, you know, Pam comes over there and say something to Karen. And Karen's like, just go do some work or something like that. And like shoot Pam away. And Pam's like, oh, hey, all right. And walks away. And then Karen thinks about it and said, wait, you know what, Pam? I'm sorry. She says, you will say what? Say what? what? She said, I'm sorry. She said, you know, she said, what's, why are you acting like that? She said, you never say you sorry for anything you say or do to me. You have you never do that. And she was like, well, maybe I need to. You know, so she apologized or whatever it was and then invited Pam with her to go with them after work. And I said she was just using Pam as backup or something or some type of muscle to she knew that she was going to go in there starting some mess and was being prepared in case Fatima was there. And we could tell this because when Pam said, oh, cool, you ain't saying nothing but a word. It's about to go down. And Karen said, it is. You have no idea. So we already knew she was going to start some mess. So next we have this cute little scene with Zach showing up to Fatima's job with food for her, for lunch while she's studying and working, you know. And then Danny calls and invites her to the mocktail party. And when Fatima hears that Karen will be there, she decides maybe she shouldn't go or whatever. And she said, look, you're my friend, you're Andy's friend, and we'd love for you to come. And she said, I'll think about it. She hangs up and Zach tells her that she should go to the sister circle. And she said, but you're the one who always don't want me to go. And he was like, yeah, and how has that been working out? He said, maybe you'll go and this will become like a truce between y'all or something with the different friends, you know, which are sharing the same friends. So Fatima was saying, okay, cool, I'll go. Next thing we know, we have Miss Marie is at the law firm still. 
and she's walking through the halls with Andy discussing things. And Andy mentions how she's working on that gag order to stop Marie's husband and his lawyers from leaking any details to the press. And Miss Marie is saying, do you think that's really going to stop him? Ain't no gag order going to stop them people from doing something like this. And then she says, if Andy is any good, they won't even have to go to trial. Then added that she knew Andy probably needed a cold counsel, which Andy disagreed, you know, wholeheartedly. But then as they were talking, Hayden overhears Miss Marie saying some things and he makes his move. And he tells Miss Marie he's sorry for, you know, stepping in, but he would be remiss if he didn't let you know, you know, that she would be is in danger or something like that, losing a sizable portion of her estate. And Miss Marie is like, please do continue. And he says that he took the liberty of going over the pre and post nuptial agreements that her previous attorneys had her husband sign years ago, you know, before they got married. And well, it seems they established an ironclad asset protection trust for her. Then he started telling her about Georgia law and how it protects her assets that are in that trust. And she was like, oh, okay. And she was loving him now. And he said, so all Andy or any incompetent attorney has to do is enforce those agreements. So Marie makes him a cold counsel and tells him they better work together in protecting her money or she's going to take her business and their lucrative commission to another law firm. And so she walked away, hating the smirking, and Andy standing there pissed. I'm telling y'all, she's so wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. She didn't even know how to stand up for herself. She just let Hayden keep going on. And Miss Marie wasn't even thinking about Andy anymore. She said she's getting bored with her conversation. I said, oh, snap. So now we have Maurice in his apartment doing one of his little sexual talks with a client. When he hears a knock at his door and it's Sabrina. And he tells her, lunch is only an hour and that page will report her, you know, because he knows he lives far away from the branch. So how is she coming back and forth? But you see, she just got the job and she always do, already doing something she ain't supposed to be doing. She need to stay in her office and stop running back and forth. She could have called Maurice for that, you know, at lunchtime out in the parking lot from her car. So anyway, she tells him that Paige got herself fired for doing something freaky or something with customers and India had no choice but to give her the job. So then Maurice decided to make a confession and let her know that he he's the one who called up and made a, a complaint about Paige to the bank. I said, oh, snap. He said, are you mad at me? And Sabrina kind of said, no. But you know what, Sabrina? You might not have gotten a job if Maurice didn't do that. Anyway, Sabrina asks Maurice to come back and told him now he can stop doing this stuff, you know, the sexual stuff on the line. But I'm sitting there going, Sabrina made the first stupid move. She should have waited, got her feet wet, proved herself, then brought Maurice back. How as soon as you get a job, a new position, you bring back the person who's partially responsible for the bank almost getting robbed. It makes no sense she's not thinking. Give it a month or two or something. You know what I mean? Especially since they didn't even want to bring him back. So that makes her look bad if you ask me. And she better step it up in making sure Maurice respects her and do what she tells him to do as his manager. Because she will lose her job if she doesn't treat him the same way as the other employees. Now, I like this next scene at the salon with Pam and Karen. Even though it seems like Pam is just trying to kiss Karen's butt to get to leave early, I believe what Pam is saying. And Pam says, you know, now that we are besties and stuff, I was wondering if I could take an extra half an hour for lunch. And at first, Karen was going to deny her until she said she was going to the bank to see Sabrina to open up a business account. She said because the lawyers that Andy hooked her up with said she needs to get that done for tax purposes and things like that. So she said she wants to be a legit businesswoman, just like her role model. And Karen asked who was her role model. And Pam said that it was her. And Karen was surprised. She was like, what? And she said, yeah. And she told her the reasons why. And then so Pam, I mean, then Karen told Pam she could take as much time as she needs. And when she got excited and left out, Karen's eyes were tearing up and, you know, and watery. You know, because, see, as bad as she talks to Pam, and she does talk bad to Pam, 
Pam still cared about her, loved her, had her back all the time through everything. And Karen almost didn't deserve somebody as nice as Pam in her life. So I hope this will help her a little bit to change some. But at this mocktail party, we're going to see that it doesn't help a damn bit. So now we have a quick scene with Danny and Tony's office. And he gives her a gift. And she's like, it's not my birthday. He said, do I need, does it need to be a birthday for me to celebrate my lady? So she opens it up and it's a set of pearls in replacement of the costume ones that she gave his daughter. And she was like, oh, thank you. And so he put them on her and she said how much she loved them. So that was a quick scene. I don't know why it was necessary, but that's what they did for us. So now we see Andy in her office, steaming about Hayden, worming his way into her divorce case. And Fatima comes in and asks, what's going on? Because she see her going back and forth. And then Hayden comes in and asks for Fatima to leave. And Fatima was like, who are you talking to like that? You know, or whatever. You know who you're talking to? And Andy's like, can you just give us the room for a minute by ourselves or whatever it is? So when Fatima leaves, Hayden sits down and says, he needs for her to bring him up to speed on that case. And I was like, here we go with the mess. And Andy's like, I know what you're doing, but it's not going to work. I can't even go into that thing because I can't stand Andy right now. She doesn't know how to stand up for herself and fight for herself. So I don't understand how she's supposed to be so great attorney. And like I'm going to keep telling y'all, neither one of them I feel deserve to get that managing partner position. So now we have Jordan. We, he has a gentleman named Ethan coming over to his house to interview with him. And he wants to hire him to work on his campaign. And this guy has a great resume. I mean, to me, if you have a great resume, they still should look it over. And I'm wondering, has Jordan's people looked over this guy's resume and his background or anything like that? Especially with everything that's going on. So anyway... He meets with him, he likes him, he hires him on the spot. We later find out that this great guy is a plant put in place by Hudson for Gary, who plans on destroying Jordan's campaign from the inside out. Now, what did Jordan ever do to him? Only thing Jordan did was like Andy. And it's a shame that Gary is so manipulative and so evil that he would go through so many lengths and jump so many hoops to destroy somebody who did nothing to him. He did it with Robin. He can't help himself. He doesn't want anybody to be with Andy. He wants her to be miserable because she doesn't want him anymore. But y'all let me know down in the comment section if I'm wrong about that, okay? So the quick scene in Gary's office is showing Hudson getting a call from the guy Ethan saying that he's in. And he hangs up and tells Gary, okay, we're good to go. Jordan Williams is about to have his entire political career dismantled from the inside out. And Gary is so happy. And at some point, Tyler Perry has have to have somebody like Gary get his. What happened to this whole FBI checking into him and stuff? He's still sitting there when they were talking about all the things that he did. How is he still sitting there in his office and not in jail? Make it make sense. So now we over at the juice bar and Sabrina's talking to Rich and he has closed down the juice bar for the whole hour for Sabrina and her friends so that they could celebrate her for getting that new position as the branch manager. So he gives her this lovely briefcase as a gift and it was a briefcase that she liked, you know, and he knew she liked it. And she was saying, what did I do to deserve such a man like you or something like that? And anyway, they started kissing and Danny comes in. They don't even stop kissing. So Danny's sitting there and they finish. She goes, you know, y'all going to scare away some customers. They come in there and see all of this going on. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking the same thing. Then Fatima came in. Then um, Andy came in. She said, oh, had I known that you were coming, you know, I we could have drove together. She said, well, I thought it best to drive my own car anyway because just in case something pops off and I have to leave. And they like, oh, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to pop off. And Danny says, look, we all like you. You can three against one. It shouldn't be a problem. You're in our sister's circle. You're engaged to Zach. You're part of the circle. And Karen comes and says, oh, is that really? But she comes in with Pam. Pam ain't part of the circle. And ain't nobody said nothing to Pam. 
But as everything was going down, I see Pam over there rolling her eyes and looking, you know, and like acting like Karen. These people ain't do nothing to you, Pam, and you know how Karen is. So I don't even know why you rolling along with that whole messy mess that Karen is. You heard her on the phone being messy at the salon. So come on, Pam, have your own mind. But as y'all all knew and we all knew, Karen was going to come in and be messy. She gets in an argument with Danny about being her friend. She tells them all, y'all sitting here want to be friends with a biatch who's trying to stop a man from being a father to his own children. And Fatima said, that's a lie. And then here come Pam. She wouldn't lie to you, Fatima. And Fatima was like, uh-uh, don't you jump and say nothing. She said, I'm sparing her behind because she's pregnant. She said, but I stomp your little ass out. I was like, I don't know she did. And she said, you don't know who I am? I'm going to look Google me. I'm an entrepreneur, biatch. <laughs> I said, Pam is so stuck on this entrepreneur thing, she's losing her daggone mind behind it. Anyway, they like, she cuckoo crazy. But Karen got up and told Fatima, you want my friends? You can have them. Go ahead. Maybe our friendship has run its course. You already got my man. So I said, listen to her. Still calling Zach her man. And so she left out, come on, Pam. And Pam left out saying, roots to riches, biatches. <laughs> Something like that. They said, that child is crazy. Anyway, I don't want to go into any further details. But then Andy's phone rang and Andy answered it. And it was um, Jordan. Asking her, has she heard from his sister? He had been calling and texting, and she hasn't answered. And she said she hadn't spoken to her that day. So she, she tried to make him feel better by saying, you know, maybe it's a pregnancy thing. Maybe she's just resting and sleeping a lot, blah, blah, blah. He said, yeah, maybe I'm just being an overprotective brother. She said, yeah. So when she hung up, she walked over to Fatima and said, girl, I need you to go make a stop with me. Fatima said, I know that look. So Fatima was ready. <laughs> Oh, but I forgot about that cute little scene with Zach with Michael reading him a book. I thought that was cute. So, you know, I like the scenes when we see Zach being a father and seeing them, him and Fatima, interacting with Michael. Because they got to keep working with him to get that boy talking. Because at some point in one of these shows, these episodes, they're going to have Michael say a couple of words like mama or dada and we all going to lose it, honey. Anywho, then we have this scene where Andy and Fatima show up at Gary's office and Fatima has to get rough with him and put a knife through his throat. And he's like, put it a little higher over this way. And Fatima does it, you know, and Andy's like, oh, no, please, please don't, you know, and all of this stuff. I was like, oh, stop being a soft biatch. And just, you know, Gary, you know, you got to tell us where she was. You know, she was on to you. She she can't even sound tough. If she said a curse word, we wouldn't even know what she was saying. We probably think she's saying lilies and flowers because Andy doesn't even have it in her to be hard and tough. And the fact that Gary keeps wanting people to cut him or shoot him or kill him is because he knows he in so much trouble and so much debt that he will be it would save his life to get out of it. He up there in his office chilling, about to smoke a cigar, happy with what he done did. And so Andy was wasting her breath and her time trying to talk some sense into Gary. We knew it wasn't going to do anything. But anyway, it ends with Karen getting home and Pam's calling to check on her. And Karen thanks her for having her back at the juice bar. And Pam said, anytime. Then she hung up and then the phone rang again. And it was um the doctor's office, Dr. Phillips. Now, I thought she was supposed to go and see about her amnial thesis that morning, but we didn't hear nothing about it. But now she's getting home that night, and the Dr. Phillips is calling and letting her know that one of the babies is um, Zach's, but the other one isn't. And I was like, uh-oh, but we all knew that already. So this season finale was a dud for me. I'm sorry. I know some people gave it a higher score whatever. There were certain little parts in it that were cool, but it wasn't enough to keep us, you know, like, so, oh, I can't wait till May 22nd gets here to see what happens. We're over it. We're done. So y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all thought about this episode, and I will see you all in the next video. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's your girl, Barbie J, saying peace.